Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. From First Paw Media, sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company, this is the Dog Driver Show. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Robert Forto and I'm here with my co-host Kurosh Parto. And we are the Dog Driver Show and today we have a stage and open driver calling in from Manitoba, Canada. Her name is Rachel Courtney. Tell us a little bit about her, KP. Uh, Rachel, I've been following her on uh, Facebook and her team uh, on Facebook. She has a beautiful open class team and uh, stage stop uh, style te- team. Uh, she's been uh, in uh, Canada racing for several years, originally from Germany. And uh, welcome to the show, Rachel. Uh, tell our listeners who you are and what are you all about. Hi, this is Rachel, and yeah, I'm from Caliento, Manitoba, which is right by the U.S. border. And yeah, we've got a kennel of 32 sled dogs and mainly sprint, mid-distance style dogs. And yeah, just really love having the kennel. So, Rachel, how long have you been in this sport? Uh, for uh, our listeners who are not familiar with, uh, uh, you know, traveling with dogs and coming uh, from overseas to uh, North America to race dogs, tell us how long you've been in this sport and how you started in the sport. Uh, I started, I would have been 10 years old when my parents got a Siberian Husky as a pet. And kind of how I started it was just like with a little kid sled and my my dog would pull me on that and then about when I was 13 14 I started running her with a bike so bike drawing and my parents would take me to some dryland races in Germany and I would do the one dog junior bike drawer and that's how I learned to love the sport. And then when I was 18, I decided to come to Canada to handle for a season. And I actually handled for Chris Turner. He's in Nepal, Manitoba. And that was supposed to last for six months. And then I was going to go back home. But I met my husband and stayed in Canada. <laughs> so how long have you been mushing then? Uh, so I've been over here for 10 years now. So that's as long as I've been running like a big team. And then for before that, another eight years. So about 18 years, but the first eight years were just with one dog. With the Siberian and one dog dry land classes. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned your kennel. You have a good size kennel, 52 dogs. What are your plans? What are your goals with your dog team in the upcoming season? Um, my main focus is going to be stage stop as long as I make the entry list because I think it's going to be very popular this year. And I know the priority is for people that ran it last year, which I didn't. So that'll be my main focus, hopefully. And I would love to give the Rondia a try this year. Oh, rendezvous. Uh, that is good. Yeah. We are having uh, quite a bit of people yeah. actually who do, uh, both uh, stage stop who are interested coming to Rondi and give it a uh, give it a try after. Why rendezvous? I'm kind of interested uh, to know why rendezvous. I've never been to Alaska with the dogs, and Alaska is always known as like that's the place to be with sled dogs, right? And the Rondi just sounds very intriguing for me for like just 
very different style, like way busier, right? It's like downtown and just sounds like it would be a lot of fun and a lot to learn. That, that's uh, definitely a different type of race. Uh, how's your training program? How are you planning to uh, uh, train your canine athletes for uh, the pedigree uh, race? Oh, this summer has been pretty good. So I lose run most of the summer. So they run like three to six miles a few times a week all summer long. And then come September, depending when it cools off, I usually hope for it to be lower than 10 Celsius. Not sure what that's in Fahrenheit. Then I'll start hooking them up in harness and then gradually we'll start about three miles and slowly start building up the miles and hopefully get to 35 miles by December, beginning of January. And, and then do you get on sled immediately after that? Uh, sled runs can be hard to come by here. The last few years, we've barely had enough snow to safely hook down. So I've, I've the last two times I ran this stage step, I've probably only had about six sled runs on before going to the race so that's always a challenge here that we kind of work around and try to do our best that we can with the weather we get i've seen on your pictures a lot of your training is on trails fairly flat isn't it oh yeah flat there's not even a bump like we're as <laughs> flat as it can be like <laughs> no hills at all so so as a flatlander, how are you planning to prepare your dog team for pedigree in the mountains in the Rockies? Well, I actually don't per se do any hill training, but I do every every so often let them pull the quad in neutral just to kind of get them used to the idea of like pulling more of a dead weight. The first year I went to stage top, I did go out a few weeks earlier and they kind of got used to running in the hills that way. But then the second year I went, I actually didn't. And I mean, now it helps that a lot of my dogs have seen that in the past and they seem to be able to transition to it perfectly fine. But it's not, not ideal, that's for sure. And uh, do you do majority of your training by yourself, or uh, you have handlers, your husband, family, friends helping you? Uh, most of the training I do my, by myself, but we I, we do sometimes get a handler in. Like this year, we're planning to have a handler that will hopefully be here by November. Yeah, I can imagine with the baby and work and the dogs and all <laughs> of that, it's not the easiest, is it? And no, it can be challenging, but... We've got a pretty good setup going. The dogs are really good with our, my little one now. So it's definitely been a big change, but we'll make it work. <laughs> That's good. That is good. And uh, uh, tell me about your dogs. Uh, what are the lines behind them? And uh, how many adults, how many puppies, uh, what you got going in your kennel? Uh, most of my line, it's kind of a little bit of a mix. It's like uh, Buddy Streeper. Cook lions, Eddie lions. It's kind of kind of a blend of all of them. That's the biggest percentage, though. I guess where the lions come from. So a lot of the dogs now are born, raised here, though. So, but that's like the background of their bloodlines. And this year, we actually don't have any pups as of right now. So, we have. I'll have 24 running dogs, like running dogs as in like they're all between a year and eight and then the others are retired dogs that will do some running, but they won't be like potential candidates for the big races. And uh, when you talk about the dogs and your kennel, are they considered your dogs or they are, you know, Serge and your dogs together? You do it as a family? both like definitely both like he did my husband doesn't do much of the actual like running the dogs and training the dogs but he like makes sure the truck is running or grooms trails or a lot of the other things that need to be done too so he's like more trail maintenance mechanic so yeah but like he'll help me like we we feed the dogs in the evening together and 
Like he does a lot of the other stuff around the dogs, just not the actual running the dogs. And uh, other than the, the uh, pedigree race, what are the other races you uh, uh, do or you're planning to do? This season, I'm, I guess it depends a little bit on COVID. Like, I'm not sure what it's like in Alaska now, but like, I'm hoping that the Canadian, like the Manitoba, Saskatchewan circuit will have their races again and definitely try to hit some of them. It'll depend if I go to Rondi, then like Cross Lake, the Paul, I probably wouldn't run. But if I don't go up to Alaska, then those would be, I would be running the Paul, Manitoba or Cross Lake, Manitoba. They're like, three days 35 miles have you done lapa before yes i have and how do you like that race and uh can you tell us about i that really race? like the race it's like it, when i first came to canada i went to the paw so it kind of almost feels like a hometown race to me very yeah i love that town so it's a lot of fun it's very different like it's along uh, the highway so people can actually drive along the highway and watch a race but it's flat, <laughs> but we're used to that because that's what we train on all the time. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, I've seen pictures. I've never done Lepaul, of course, uh, but uh, I've seen pictures of it uh, where cars are parked along the road <laughs> and the dog teams are flying by in the ditch uh, right by the highway. Is that uh, what you remember from the race too? Yeah, pretty much. It's flat and straight and like you're literally like in the ditch of the highway the whole time. So you've got tons of vehicles driving up and down watching all the races. So it's kind of neat. It's really nice for spectators because they get to see the whole race. Uh, that race, I believe, is 35 miles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, how many miles do you prepare your dog team uh, in training to hit that uh, mileage? Uh, I'll, I'll usually train up to like about, it's like the trail I have here goes up to about 34 miles. So pretty much a full distance of what they will be racing. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, how many of those runs uh, do they get before they hit those uh, bigger races? Uh, anywhere between four and six at that mileage. It kind of depends on weather, trail conditions. Beautiful. Everything. But I try to at least do four of them. Very good, very good. Well, obviously, if you come for Ronda, you're going to hit way less than that. You know, here we run around 25, 26 miles, so you'll be doing cruising very very easily on those shorter mileage yeah so i i think the bigger challenge will be all the obstacles that my dogs are not used to i'm uh, even on my home training trails i'm lucky if i see one person when i'm training so. oh gosh <laughs> yeah you'll see a lot of tunnels and bridges and loose dogs and barbecues and uh, you can you can name it we have it moose <laughs> <laughs> uh preferably not the moose but i'm <laughs> Definitely. Uh, tell me about your uh, nutrition program that you have, Rachel. Uh, how do you uh, feed your kennel? Mm, it's mainly raw with some commercial dog food. We get uh, it's main, a big percentage of it would be chicken from Baldwin's perfectly raw dog food. And then we mix in some beef, some egg, some liver, and fish oil and then we feed a commercial dog food that's called Nutrisource. So basically majority of your uh, program is raw then, huh? Yeah, like it's about 75% raw and then 25% commercial dog food. Do you maintain the same diet, uh, Rachel, during the year or you have uh, uh, chain? Pretty, pretty close, pretty close, yeah. Because we talk to, uh, obviously, if you heard the program, we talk to a lot of uh, European uh, drivers and they do a lot of supplements and, uh, you know, pre-exercise, post-exercise uh, supplements. Do you do any of those or you stay with the more of a traditional raw diet? Uh, I do use, it's, I guess it's called glycocharge. It's almost like revive, kind of like an after-run power drink. And then I've used a few supplements like Genesis I've added before, but for the most part, I don't use too many supplements. Like the only one that I really, really use religiously would be like Glycocharge. So after the run. And uh, any fat supplements during the winter time or no, you mainly stick with the same diet? 
Uh, no, not really. Like the chicken we get from Baldwin's is fairly fatty in itself. So that's kind of where they get the fat from. You know, when you were taught chicken fat. Uh, when you were telling me about tasks, who does what in your uh, kennel program, you said your husband takes care of the truck and everything. And tell our listeners how it is important to organize a truck going from Canada all the way through Wyoming, for example, what it takes to put a trip like this together. <laughs> uh, yeah, like obviously it's like a lot of planning in advance, right? Like, so he makes sure everything is done like, everything's checked over again like just like oil change make sure all the mechanics are working hopefully the truck stays sound but it doesn't always happen even with all the checks in advance and then so usually it's me and my helper that actually go on the road my husband stays home but he'll take care of all the young dogs or older dogs that don't travel on the road with us and then we can take up to about three to four weeks worth of dog food on the road of us so it's a lot of packing organizing try to fit everything in that we need for the period of time that we'll be gone and yeah it's kind of an organized chaos <laughs> if that makes any sense like what do you have tell us like uh, obviously how many how many dogs do you haul uh i usually bring about 24 with me okay and how many bags of dog food uh commercial dog food will be about eight bags of commercial and then we'll have how many pounds of meat (laughs) yeah lots and lots of meat like 20 blocks and they're all about 50 pounds each so yeah low (laughs) so a thousand pounds of meat yeah so it's a the truck's loaded by the time we're leaving (laughs) Yeah, that's what I wanted like uh, our listeners to know what it takes to organize a, just one race, actually. And some of uh, us mushers, you know, they go on circuits. Uh, you, we interviewed the Streepers. We interviewed uh, Annie Mallow. They go for months on the road. And Yeah, uh, they've got big trailers. Like, I don't have a trailer. We just have the truck as one unit with the box on, on the back. Yeah. What is the most uh, interesting experience you had or race you had in your career? Most interesting. Uh, your favorite. I mean, like, an ex- my favorite My favorite race is definitely the stage sub. I, I love that race. It's, yeah, so, yeah, it's just, you feel like you've had a full season by the end of it because it's, like, so many different days of racing and different communities and, different trails each day which i really enjoy so a little more strategy to it too because you've got you can only run 10 but you have a pool of 14 so you can kind of play around with which dogs you want run which dogs rest and and yeah the people that are put that race on are just yeah top notch like very 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 well organized then the communities are so supportive of the race definitely by far my favorite race so far rachel before we go i always ask our guests the same questions and i'm interested to hear your response uh just just coming from from your background and, and your goals and plans for the year and that is if a person's just getting involved in the sport and they come up to you and they they're interested in one piece of advice what would you tell that person I guess try to learn as much as you can before getting your first team like ask lots of questions ask a lot of different mushers and I think a big thing is to try to start with a dog that's going to fit your goals so so definitely uh think about buying something or or uh, acquiring a dog that uh, is set up to help train the other dogs is that right yeah, like even just a different uh, style of dog that's going to suit you. There's so many different styles. Like you've got the long distance dogs, the mid distance. You've got the more hound you, the more Alaskan. Like, I don't know, figure out what, what style of dog will work for what you're hoping to do. 
Very good. KP, anything else for Rachel before we go? Uh, Rachel, I wanted to thank you for the last uh, 20 some minutes you spent with us. I uh, enjoyed chatting with you, knowing you a little bit more, uh, knowing more about your passion of sled dog sport. Uh, looking forward to see you here in Alaska. Hopefully you're going to hit more than just Rondi. Hopefully we will see you at other races. We have a beautiful race here in uh, Eagle River, Eagle River Classic. Hopefully uh, we'll see you here and. Uh, uh, good luck uh, with the uh, with your season uh, and your training season that you have ahead of you and uh, uh, mush on. Thank you and thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. I've been following your guys' show for and for uh, a long time now and yeah, I love being a little part of it. And uh, if you have any sponsor, anyone who you want to thank, this is the time. Uh, I. Well, I'll thank my family, like my husband. He helps me all the time. And I would like to thank my main sponsor, uh, Baldwin's Perfectly Raw, for their continuous support of dog food. Very good. On behalf of our guest today and my co-host, this is Robert Forto for The Dog Driver. We will see you guys next time. Goodbye. From First Paw Media, this is The Dog Driver Show. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art and you can see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe too. Your hosts are Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media.